So the title of the presentation is Automated Rubrics. The subtitle is Cutting Your Grading Time in Half. The reason why I think we should start implementing the automated rubrics is because the time is of the essence and everybody's running out of time. And this is something we do over and over and over every day. And this is what Faye was talking about in the last presentation with automating comments. So if you do something re repeatedly every day, even if you spend one minute on this task, it accumulates and it's, you spend more and more time. So what I'm gonna suggest today is how we can minimize the time we spend on grading students' work when we're using rubric. And we're using rubric uh, to grade writing, to grade creative projects, and there is a way that this process can be automated so we can spend more time on more productive tasks as getting uh, ready for lessons or spending time on individual consultations with students. My objective of this workshop is to enable you to create a self-graded rubric. By the end of this uh, 30 minutes, you will be able to do that. Yeah. I would like to start with a quick demo of what, what is it? Evgenia, what are you talking about? What is, what is the automated rubric? And here, what they look like. We can start from a simple checklist. We're gonna imagine that my student, list, my student name list is on the left, and once I click on the standards student has met, the score is automatically generated. If he or she has completed, uh, met all the standards, the score will be 100. If she uh, or he has completed fewer than all standards, the score will be 60. So a simple checklist can be completely automated. Now, when we move on to more complex rubrics, this is our standard rubric. We have four criteria. We have four performance levels. We have descriptors. What normally happens with uh, pencil and paper, we score, then we have to calculate, okay, what is that? Is this 10 out of 12? What is this in percent? What automatic rubrics does actually, all I need to do is just click on the descriptors and the score is automatically calculated. And that's what the automated rubric is. So all you need to do essentially is just click. If you have an iPad, if you have a mobile device, you can do it on your palm. And by the end of the class, the score is generated is put into the student list. We can also change the name to, let's say, Evgeny. Just refresh for a little while and then you will have a student list with scores already generated. This is what the automatic rubric is. It generates the score, generates everything for you. All you need to do is just click on those buttons. Another example of our even more sophisticated rubric, we have our regular rubric here, but we also have a, sort of like a drop down menu of the scores. And then once we generate the score, I'll say three and one, so the score will appear somewhere. There are many ways to customize your rubric, but the principle is still the same. The formula, the equation behind it is the same, and once you master this equation, you can do whatever you want. And that's the purpose of this workshop, to empower you to use this formula. I'm going to go through the eight-step process of how to create the automated rubric from scratch. Before I do that, there's an easier way to start using automated rubrics, and this is by using the templates that I've created before. Four by four, I have six by seven. I've created those templates so you don't have to customize it. You don't have to do anything. You have to deal with formula. All you need to do is just change the descriptors because they will change, change the criteria and then you're ready to go. But I thought that it will be helpful for you to be able to build the rubric from scratch and that's why we are here. But the templates are still there. So if you don't want to mess around with formulas in Excel or Google Forms, you can just use the templates. My task is to show you how you can create these things from scratch and it's not that hard. First thing we need to do is create a draft uh, either on paper or digitally. So what we normally do, we create a rubric on paper, digitally, doesn't matter. Once we've done that, we need to create a new Google Sheet. This is where our automated rubric will be generated. So I'm gonna go ahead, go, go to my Google Drive and generate a new Google Sheet. So once I've done that, step three is transfer the draft onto the Google Sheet. If you've done it digitally, copy and paste. If you've done it on paper, just go and populate the Google Sheet. Well, in my case, I have a rubric that has been created digitally in Google Doc. So what I'm gonna do, simply copy and paste it to my Google Sheet. If you have it on paper, create those cells, create those performance levels, criteria, and so forth. Step number four, adjust the size and visual appeal. Well, in my case, it looks a little bit ugly, 
doesn't it? I would like to just expand the cell a little bit, adjust the size so it looks more appealing, it is more user-friendly, it fits onto the screen, now it looks much better. If you're creating this completely from scratch, if you don't copy and paste, you might skip this step. Step number five, include check boxes. And this is a feature that we are going to need to automate it. You can see each cell has kind of a checkbox that enable you to interact with the rubric. The first thing we need to do is select the column on the left and insert one row below. Create this space for the checkbox. Once I've done that, select the, those cells, click on insert and click on the checkbox. I have something I can interact with. I can click and unclick. And this is necessary for the automated rubric. I'm gonna do the same for my second criteria, right click, insert one below, and right now I'll just copy those uh, checkboxes here, insert one below, insert the checkboxes, and one last time, insert the checkboxes. So as you can see, the checkbox is not centered. This is more like a visual thing, but I prefer to have them centered. I should have done it before I copy them. Step number six is customize the layout. Colors, you can merge cells. Again, if I go back to this, so it looks much cleaner, the colors, everything is like the font, you can customize that. Like that doesn't look that um, appealing to me. I will customize the font maybe. I'm not gonna do anything with this one, but this is one of the stuff that you can do. Color the cells if you want. This is optional. It doesn't have to do anything with automation. Step number seven is select a cell that will generate the total score. If I go back to my automated rubric, that's the cell that generates the score. Once I click on the rubric, this is where the score will appear. So in my case, I will select, let's say this score right here. So this score will generate my final grade. Step number eight, and this is where it gets interesting. This is why you came here, is what is the formula? How is the score generated? And so for those of you who are not familiar with Excel or Google Sheets, uh, the formula is the equation sign. This is how we start the formula. In my cell that will generate the score, I will type equation sign, and this will start the formula. For this rubric, we're going to use a formula count if. What essentially count if is, so basically we're telling Google Form that only count this if this box is checked. And that's why we need those boxes. Without the boxes, there's no variable. Right now we have box, we, have, we can check and uncheck. So what we're telling Google Form is that only count this box if it's checked. Formula has two variables. The first is range. What is the range that a Google Sheet has to look at? And to do that, I'm gonna open the bracket, and you can see there that the first argument is range. To select the range, I'm, I'm gonna click on this cell, press shift, and select the entire column. This is my range. So I want to tell Google Form, please count these boxes. And then the next argument is only count them if they are true. Only count them if they are true close bracket. Now we've started our formula. If I try and check this box, the score will change to one. That's our formula. Count if these cells are true and populate this score. So this is one, two, three, and four. Not bad for the start, but that's not what we're looking for. What if I click here now? Nothing happens because this is not in the formula. So we need to move a little bit further and include something else. First of all, we need to show the Google form that each point has different worth. If student scored here and not here, so that point costs two points, and this one costs one point, and this one costs three points. And we do that by multiplier. So if I go back to my formula, I will multiply it by the value of the point. So in this case, the value is one. So I'll multiply it by one. Only count this column if this is true, and multiply it by one, okay? Good. Now we need to include other columns, plus, and we're going to repeat the same process for all the columns. Exactly the same with the variation of range and points, right? So let me demonstrate what it looks like. I'm gonna say that please count, I'm gonna start with count if, count if, bracket, 
Now the range is going to be different. Now we're counting this range. Again, comma, what's the argument? Only count if they're true, close bracket. But now the multiplier is going to be two points. Oops, two points. So now let's check, uh, let's see if it works. A student scored two here, they should give us two points. Okay, we have two, they should give us one more, they should give us five now, and seven. So it seems like it works. Why don't we continue this equation and select the other two? So I'm gonna click plus, count if, bracket. Now select the range. Okay, the range will be this one, comma, true, and then multiplier is going to be three this time. And I'll just continue for the final column. Count, count if range is here. Argument is true, multiply by four, right. Now let's check the entire rubric. This should give us four, okay. This should give us one, five. This should give us uh, three, eight, and this should give us 12. All right, is this it? No, so what is missing? Percentage. Percentage, sure. Now we have 12 out of, what, 16 maybe? What normally happens, you have to calculate the percentage. We can also automate this step, and this is how it's done. Once we've done these things that we've done right now, the only thing that is missing is this little piece, calculating the percentage out of 100, and this is how it's done. I'll count if statements are in the brackets, and that's why we have to go a little bit back and put brackets on both sides. So I'm gonna put bracket here and all the way at the beginning. This score, 12, is now going to be multiplied by 100 and divided by the total number of points. In this case, we have four, four, so this is 16. Click enter and that's our score, 75. What I normally do, how I test it, I give student the top score, 25, 50, all right? So this is top score, and I give the minimum score. So this should give us 25, and that's it. Your rubric has been generated for one student. What I normally do, uh, once I know it's okay, I name it student one, and then just duplicate it, duplicate for student two, and so forth. And you only need to do it once for um, let's say for one project, or you can just go with one and then clear them up to each student. It's totally up to you how you then streamline your work. The complete formula looks a little bit like that. Bracket, count, range, argument, multiplier, then all your columns, close bracket, multiply by 100, divided by the total number of points. How would you share the rubric with students? Mm -hmm. Right, good question. How do we share rubric with students? Because we do share this with students because they need to know, uh, not only they need to know, it's a great way to increase transparency between how they're doing and how you think they're doing. What we normally do, we go to Google Classroom and then create a material. So when you create material, uh, as opposed to assignment or question, students literally uh, cannot do anything with it. They can only open and look at it. I had a class, I would click on material, I would click on my Google Drive and attach the rubric. Let's imagine this is a, a checklist for this student. I will click and then I will select only this student so only this student can see his or her rubric. But this would mean that you need to have a separate document for each student. So in this way you can, you can create material and then assign it only to the student and only this student will be able to see that. What I would do if I were you, I would more, maybe create uh, five or six rubrics for further assignments that I will use and this would be material for the students to see for the entire semester. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Okay. So when you share it through the material, you need to create a separate document for each student because otherwise if I just share all 25 students, they all will see each other grades. If you want to do that, go ahead, but if you want some privacy, each rubric should be designed for a specific student. Right, so what I'm gonna do with everyone, uh, I'll share with you the entire folder that I created. This folder is called Automated Rubrics. What it has, first it has the demonstration, like a video file, what they, they are. You have the Automated Rubrics Workshop, and that's 
what you've seen today, the presentation itself, examples, the sample Ruby that we created right now. What we will also see here is full demonstration and these are all sorts of rubrics that we've created for administrators and teachers. There is some checklists, some rubrics for STEAM and then you can use them as examples for your work. All right? Okay, thank you for your time.